Matt, uh, I heard lots of hooting and hollering coming from your chat room last week. You had a gold miners put play that paid multiple hundred percent. You had a TLT play. You had a UNG play. What else are you seeing over there? It looked like a monster week for you and your chat members. Yeah, we really had some great trades last week. And you know, go check with Rodrigo. He can tell you more about it if you want to sign up. But the the yeah, we had gold. I'm still very bullish on gold on a long term basis and even on an, yeah. intermediate, on an intermediate term basis. But it did get over. It did get extended. In fact, we had some 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 puts that made. Well, it was funny if you bought it. Depending on where you bought them, our average price. We bought them several times during the week. So our average price was gave us a return of somewhere between 400 and 500 percent. Uh, gain. But the ones we bought on Thursday actually had a 700% gain by Friday. We bought them at $0.08 cents, uh, on Thursday, sold them at uh, $0.65 cents on Friday. Yeah. And uh, so that worked out. And then we also bought some for next week, and those are up. Uh, we took some profits this morning. They're up over 100% this morning. So that's worked out very well. And uh, the one of the things I'm starting to look at now is some put, again, some things that are getting overbought. The one thing, Meta. Meta is a big one. It's had a great run here. I want to be careful today, however. Because it's the last day of the quarter, we know that they're not supposed institutions aren't supposed to do that window dressing where they try to hold up their their real heavy stocks. But you know that they still do it, and uh, it's not to know the, the meta will push a lot higher from here, uh, but it seems to have run out of gas. You can see it's just. Yep. just flattened out a little bit. So I guess my point is it could hold up today, but as we go further in the week, it could be a little bit vulnerable here. And looking at some other areas, uh, not just in the tech stocks, uh, you look at like the some of the industrial names, the XLI getting quite overbought uh, near term. And the same with the, some of the housing stocks. They've had great runs. There's nothing, again, I'm not saying that these things are going to roll over and, and get crushed. Same thing with Apple. Same thing with um, um, the gold. I still like gold a lot. I just realized that it had kind of, it gotten way too extended on a short-term basis, and so we took advantage of that. So these are the types of things we'll be looking at uh, this week. Really good stuff there. 13, you have anything for Matt here on this Victory Monday? Just curious on what's keeping the bullishness going. I have some idea, but I just want to hear from you what uh, is keeping the bullishness in gold going. Are you looking at, is it because we're still pumping more money into the economy? We're continuing to raise debt, but is it, uh, it, I think you also are looking at maybe the strength of the dollar as well. So I'm curious what's, what's driving that uh, bullishness on gold for you? I think it's, again, our trade was a negative one for a very short-term basis. And I did, as I mentioned, I, I still like it. The thing I think is driving it right now is what's going on with the Middle East. People are very worried and they're like, but the market keeps going up, so I don't want to short the market. The momentum is there, so I got to buy something that should be helpful here. And gold is a good safety play, flight to safety play. And of course, it is rallying overall. It came down a little bit last week, and we were able to take advantage of that. But overall, it's had a great run. Its outlook is still very good. And so I, I guess that's the main reason. The And then it's also a little bit of a, a, a hedge against inflation if it starts to raise its head. But the real thing, I think, is the Middle East. If you start to get, if that it's coming to a head. I mean, that is, this is escalating at a much faster oh, rate. So you yeah. need to have some protection. I think this is one of the areas where they're buying it. Gotcha. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, really good stuff. Matt, I know we talked a little bit about some of the Chinese names earlier. We've got a direct question here from someone in the chat asking, what do you think of Yang here? So really asking about Yang and Yin. The This is the levered ETFs to play China. I know you said uh, you had given uh, short-term, medium-term, long-term outlook here. Do you look at Yin and Yang? Do you ever play these for short or uh, short-term trades at all? I've never played them, but I do think they're good plays. And we, I bought some uh, FXI, put some calls to, to, to uh, trade in that. But these things can, are very good plays. And again, I just think the Yang, you see how you see how oversold it's getting. And uh, the one thing is funny because they can, the Chinese government can't control the market. They can they talk about some people that you know the, the market's manipulated and all this stuff. China, it's absolutely manipulated. They come right in themselves and buy it. So will they? They'll, but they'll have a tougher time manipulating it because they can't go in and, and well, I suppose they can come in and start buying FXI in the, in the U.S. market. But uh, the point is, they will do things to keep this elevated and held up. So I don't know that, that, that this thing's going to fall in a big way. I'm guessing it probably will. I think that the, mm -hmm. the, the China's market will come down. So I think Yang and some of these things will, will play well because they'll bounce back as the market comes down. But I don't think they'll come down a lot. I'm just saying I just don't think they're going to rally, and they're, they're just going to continue to rally this week, especially with their market being closed.